everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching the Electric Performance Channel, where we've got Blake Fuller here, the race car driver for our Model 3 Electric Performance Racing Team. And now, Blake, I have a question for you. So the Model 3, it has regen brakes, and it has the regular old squeezy, squeezy, heat up, slow down kind of brakes. Um, that's the technical term, I believe. Do we need to be even thinking about brakes? Uh, are you just gonna be using regen? I mean, you're going uphill. Talk to me about brakes. Yeah, so brakes are, uh, gosh, kind of like our tire discussion that we had. Um, it's a series of compromises in making certain decisions on brakes. Um, so let's take it from a high level. People think, well, the brake pedal that slows the car down. Why would you ever want to have better brakes, right? Well, it, don't don't hit that. <laughs> exactly. That's the slow pedal. Hit yeah, the fast one. Exactly. The the one on the right wins the race. Not really. It's actually the one on the left. So just as an example, the Model Three, the Model S, blows everybody away with how strong it accelerates. Right. Um, so peak acceleration in a Model S is typically about one to one point one g. In a Model Three, it's like 0.9 to one g, which means like one force of gravity is how fast it accelerates. With proper brakes and proper tires, the Model Three will decelerate, meaning it'll brake at one point seven g. Wow. So it stops faster than it accelerates. Now, most people on the road have no problem flooring a car from a light it's a nice giddy feeling but very few times outside of avoiding an accident or where some jerk cuts you off in traffic that left pedal just kind of sits there it doesn't really do much and so people don't think of that as being a speed defining you know choice but it's huge because what that means is that the later you can break into a corner the longer you can stay on the gas which means you're covering more ground over a shorter period of time so at pike's peak each of those long straightaway sections or between the next corners, the longer I can wait to have to get off that fun, happy, fast pedal <laughs> and go to the brakes, the better. Also, the, um, the regen side that you talk about, that, that's something that I think we'll share a little bit more after the event because right now we have certain assumptions we're making, certain things we're learning. Um, but until we actually get on the mountain and say, aha, this is the way to do it, um, the nice thing is we do have adjustability on our regen. Um, with Pikes in 2016, I basically just had standard or low regen, you know, where it was just kind of coasting. Yeah, I just I want to ask about that just at a high level, right? So basically, we have something that, that ice cars don't have. We have regen brakes. So, so that means that when you take your foot off the accelerator, you can decide in the Model 3 how much re regen you're going to get back. But that comes with the trade-off, like you said, right? You're now heating up the components. And can you just talk a little bit about why that's maybe a bad thing? So when we do regen braking on the Model 3 Performance in track mode, we have the ability to have regen up to over 100 kilowatt of energy going back in. So if we think about taking your car to the superchargers, let's say a 125 or a 150 kilowatt, and you hear all the fans going and everything to offset that to keep the battery happy, if we go to full regen on the Model 3, it's like getting a we're supercharger. Charging. Yeah, you get we're a supercharger. Supercharging the battery. Exactly. And, and, wow. th and thanks to like the, the scan of my Tesla and um, the OBD2 scanner that we have, I actually looked through the Model 3's history, and 23% of all of the charging that occurred was from regen braking. So wow. just think about that. Like 23% of the energy would have gone into the brake pads into the tires, into that magic, you know, floating rubber dust that's in the air, as opposed to, you know, there's still rubber, but <laughs> you're actually recovering that much energy. It's, it's huge. So it, it, it's, it's something that we have to decide, do we want to transfer that heat into the brakes or into the battery? In a short course for, format, recover it, put it in the battery. But going up pikes where it's already struggling, it's going to be one of our learns and one of our challenges with a production-based car. It, it's hugely improved over the Model S. Um, but it's still something that we have some decisions to make. And what's interesting here is you only get to test that out once because even though we get some testing time, we never get the full mountain until the race day. Yeah, so we don't even get to test it once. We just have to do it. It's right. like it's, it's, it's <laughs> well, yeah, the, that's the, our test. The, right. the M and M one shot thing, you know. <laughs> right. The interesting thing to me about uh, brakes and brake pads is, you know, we talked. Uh, in our episode about wheels and tires, about the contact patch of a tire being about the width of your palm, or in the case of maybe the Performance Model 3, maybe two palms next to each other. But for um, brakes, it's even smaller than that. So the brake pad um, interface on the Model 3 front end actually 
what clasps the rotor is about the size of your hand, but it's on both sides pushing. And besides the clamping force, which if we keep our production calipers, that clamping force is really only going to possibly change by maybe stainless steel brake lines or having um, the ABS system provide additional force. But that pad material is really where the magic comes in, is deciding a pad material that not only has good initial bite when it's cold, um, that kind of feeling of like that glazed and or no breaking capability, even though you're putting the pressure down, that's how sometimes a racing pad can be until it's warmed up. So th this is something where we're working with a company to uh, hopefully buy Pikes, but if not afterwards, to look at the unique challenges of a Model 3, where you have a very uh, binary type vehicle. On one side, it can do all of the braking without ever using that pad. But on the other side, when you really are giving it hell, <laughs> you've got a 500, almost 500 horsepower vehicle that weighs 4,000 pounds that you're hurtling towards a corner the corner and you want to stop as quickly as possible. So I got a question for you guys. Do you want to take a guess on how hot the, the pads actually get? So, I mean, just to, to begin with, uh, imagine you take your hands together, imagine you're going 120 miles an hour and those rotors got to be whipping past. Just, just everyone watching, <laughs> do this. Keep, keep going, <laughs> keep going, keep, keep going, keep going. Okay, that's, that is warm, <laughs> right? Those are your hands, and they weren't even going that fast. So, uh, okay, my guess is going to be uh, 800 degrees Celsius. Wow, I have I have no clue. I, I know it's I did really Celsius because it sounds a bit fancier, and no one knows what the te <laughs> that temperature is. We've done testing with the factory pads as well as we have done some testing with aftermarket pads, which are completely acceptable within the rules because they're a duality. Yes, they offer additional performance, but it's a safety thing. Um, one thing that you may not have experienced yet, but you guys are going to check it out when we go to Pikes. It doesn't matter if you're the race car or not. When you come down from Pikes Peak from the summit, there is a halfway point that is called the brake check area. And it's there on purpose because most people don't go to the mountains except for on vacation and they're afraid to go over 15 miles an hour. So their SUV is literally riding those brakes because they don't have regen the whole way down to the brake stop. And if that is above 400 degrees Fahrenheit, they will stop you and make you cool off, which is also why they sell donuts and souvenirs at that place. <laughs> I mean, that's why we have truck runaway lanes for when they're coming down the mountains is because if you overheat the brakes, bad things start to happen to your brakes. And then you're not slowing down anymore. You're speeding up and most likely you were slowing down because you were going downhill. So that's why they have those truck runaway ramps. So, okay, what temperature are we talking about then? All right, so the front brakes are averaging between 1200 to 1400 Fahrenheit. And the rear will go between about 800 and 1200, depending on how the car is being driven. What do I mean by that? So. The, you got to keep in mind the Model 3 and the Model S, they do not have what's called a limited slip differential. And a limited slip in a traditional car is what main, kind of puts power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip, which was a, kind of the, the tagline for back in the day. With the Model 3, they actually utilize the brake pads to moderate wheel spinning or slip and traction control as well as stability. So depending on how I have the settings will determine, especially on the rear pads, how hot those get um, because they're trying to fight for grip. An advantage of running like the R compound tires versus say an all season is that when you're coming out of tight corners, the brakes don't have to do as much work because now you've got real mechanical grip in those R compound tires to be able to actually grip the surface and you're not having to hold back the power with the pads. So when we switch to our compounds, you actually get lower brake temperatures in the rear. This is so cool. I'm learning so much in these episodes. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to each one that comes out. Thank you so much, Blake, for your time. Uh, we're going to be talking about much more stuff on Electric Performance Channel, so don't forget to subscribe and like so you can follow all the cool stuff that's going on on the road to Pikes Peak. Thanks for watching Electric Performance. Please subscribe, share, and hit the like button.